and right before the by-elections, Singh suddenly had a change of heart, or so he said, the farmers and fishermen, the factory workers uh, and forestry workers, the hardworking people, the soldiers who protect our country and keep it glorious and free. They reminded me of the Canadian promise, the promise that anyone from anywhere could do anything, that hard work would get you a powerful paycheck that bought affordable food, gas, and homes in safe neighborhoods. A country where it didn't matter where you came from, it mattered where you were going, it didn't matter who you knew, it mattered what you could do. That's the country that I inherited. I was born of humble means and raised by school teachers. The country my wife came to as a refugee from Venezuela, six people in a two bedroom basement apartment in Montreal, but look at the success they've enjoyed. That was the Canadian promise. But after nine years of the NDP Liberals, that promise is broken. Everything costs more because of money printing deficits that destroy our money and our dollar and high taxes that punish work and destroy paychecks. A carbon tax that's now 17 cents a liter, which the NDP Liberals have voted and budgeted to increase to 61 cents a liter. That tax increase would grind our economy to a halt. The trucks and trains that deliver the goods to our supermarkets would stop rolling. Their drivers would be unemployed. The factories that ship their goods in those trucks and trains would shut down. It would be like a nuclear winter for our economy if the Trudeau NDP liberal agenda of hiking the carbon tax to 61 cents a liter were to go ahead. Now, hard work doesn't pay. You earn it, the NDP liberals take it from you. Housing costs have doubled. Faster high rising housing prices in Canada than in any other G7 country. Now 25 to 45 percent more expensive. We have middle-class workers living in cars and tents. Tent cities have now become common in every single center across this country where they never existed before in once pristine and beautiful community parks. We now have people living in tents, either because they can't afford homes or because the radical NDP liberal agenda of flooding our communities with taxpayer-funded and decriminalized hard drugs has addicted our people leaving them lying on pavement, their contorted bodies, uh, half lifeless. Maybe they will be among, maybe they are among the 44,000 people who have died of overdoses in the last nine years of this chaotic policy. Our borders have lost all their security. 99% of shipping containers go uninspected. That's where all the drugs and guns come in leading to a 120% increase in gun violence under Justin Trudeau's radical agenda of banning hunting rifles while allowing criminals to run free. Catch and release crim criminal justice has made us all uh, 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 lose our security. Now, Jagmeet Singh, who supported all these policies, in fact pushed for them to happen, says that Justin Trudeau is radioactive and right before the by-elections, Singh suddenly had a change of heart, or so he said, publishing a video claiming that he was no longer in the costly coalition. Well, let's look at the wording. <clears throat> the costly coalition is called a supply and confidence agreement. So if you're pulling out, you have to vote non-confidence. If you don't, you're still in the agreement. No matter what your video stunt would have everyone else believe. So the question that Jagmeet Singh has been asked 31 times in the last week and he has refused to answer is whether he will vote non-confidence to trigger a carbon tax election. Now why is that? Well let's just inspect the timing here for a second. He did his video two days before voting started in those by-elections trying to trick people into thinking he was no longer part of the coalition. The by-elections will be held on Monday, after which he can just change his mind. 
and go back to voting to keep Trudeau in power. So I have an announcement and a challenge. I'm announcing that common sense conservatives will put forward a non-confidence motion at the earliest possible opportunity. And I'm asking Jagmeet Singh and the NDP to commit unequivocally before Monday's by-elections. Will they vote non-confidence to bring down the costly coalition and trigger a carbon tax election? Or will Jagmeet Singh sell out Canadians again? Which will it be? It's put up or shut up time for the NDP. There will be a carbon tax election, and in it, Canadians will decide whether they keep the NDP Liberals in power to tax your food, punish your work, double your housing cost, unleash crime, chaos, drugs and disorder on our streets. Will they vote for a 61 cent a litre carbon tax? Or will they elect a common sense conservative government that will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget and stop the crime? And we need to bring them down now because otherwise carbon tax Carney's agenda will predominate. We found out that there's a new fa phantom finance minister. Now they have a lame duck minister right now who Trudeau is pushing aside, just like he pushed aside other female ministers. And he's bringing in carbon tax Carney, uh, someone who uh, has too many conflicts to hold the real position. Now, Trudeau said he offered uh, carbon tax Carney the real job, but that, that, that caused a dilemma. Would carbon tax Carney pick power or money? And he said, I know, I'll have both. He keeps the money with his uh, chairmanship of a large multinational corporation that's moving investment to China that buys pipelines in Latin America and the Middle East while he opposes them here in Canada. He gets to push his radical Davos agenda of you will own nothing and be happy, while at the same time he doesn't have to respect any of the contra conflict of interest laws. He doesn't have to have his interests and his investments exposed online like the rest of us. He gets all the power and all the money and none of the accountability. And my worry is that he's going to push for a higher carbon tax. And we know that because when Trudeau relented under my pressure and paused the carbon tax on home heating for oil heated homes, carbon tax Carney st stood up and said, no, there should be a tax on home heating right now. In other words, carbon tax Carney believes the tax doesn't go far enough. I have quotes from his book here. And I, I raise this with you because he was trying to weasel out and keep his position secret in yesterday's press conference. Here's what he said in his book. The Canadian federal carbon pricing framework is a model for others. One of the most important initiatives is carbon pricing. The best approach is revenue neutral progressive carbon tax. These are among the reasons why people are starting to know him as carbon tax karmi. There we go, even a nice little uh, horn to mark the occasion. Carbon Tax Carney, it's now official. That is his name. And he has a radical agenda. My message to Carbon Tax Carney is come in from out of the shadows. We don't need a phantom finance minister. If you are going to be pulling the strings, you should be on the floor of the House of Commons with your massive financial interests and your foreign interests disclosed to Canadians. Stop pushing to kill Canadian jobs while you ship the jobs abroad. Make your carbon tax agenda known and be held accountable for Canadians so that we can choose in the carbon tax election. And when we do, common sense conservatives will bring home the country we know and love, where hard work earns a powerful paycheck that buys affordable food, gas, and homes in safe neighborhoods where anyone from anywhere can do anything where the Canadian promise is restored. Now let's bring it home. Yes, oh, we, we, we would continue going forward. We can't. We're going to bring home the international student system we had before Justin Trudeau, which was a modest, 
number of pe young people who were extremely promising could come here and study and if they excelled, they followed the law, they learned English or French, they could be join, permanently join the Canadian uh, family. We brought them in in numbers that we could house, employ, and care for in the event they needed health care. That system was the best in the world. Uh, it was under Sean Fraser who, who just opened the floodgates and brought in so many people that uh, now by the admission of Trudeau, Miller and the entire Liberal government, this, it's out of control and it's hurting our housing market. In Brampton, they found 26 international students living in one basement, in one house. Kids are being sold into sex slavery and are being sent back to India in body bags. This is turning into a massive humanitarian crisis entirely caused by Trudeau and the NDP Liberals. We will bring home common sense on international students, temporary foreign workers, and population growth. Well, we will cap population growth so that the housing stock always grows faster than the population. <clears throat> we'll have we'll have exact numbers in the next election, but. We're building like 240,000 homes. That's like 1.4% increase in our housing supply. You can't grow the population faster than that unless you're going to have uh, worse housing shortages. So we've been, under Trudeau and the NDP, we've been growing the population by almost 3%, but we grow the housing stock by 1.3, 1.4%. No wonder we're running out of homes. That's not even a question of whether you support or not immigration. It's a question of whether you support mathematics. Uh, and humans need homes, and I don't care where they come from. It doesn't matter if you've been here for two days or two centuries. Your family's been here for two centuries. You need a place to live. The only way to get rid of the shortage is to build homes faster than we add people, and that's why we will have a mathematical formula that caps population growth below the growth in the housing stock. <laughs> to bring down the government. Are you confident that you can actually force an election this fall? <clears throat> well, that's up to uh, the sellout NDP. Are they going to put their actions where their words are? Jagmeet Singh claims that he's torn up the supply and confidence agreement. That means he has to vote non-confidence to trigger a carbon tax election. And I'm asking him to answer the question he has dodged 30 one times. Will you vote non-confidence to trigger a carbon tax election at the earliest possible time? Yes or no? Sell out Jagmeet Singh. Will you vote to keep your friend Justin Trudeau and the costly coalition in power? Or will you allow Canadians to choose in a carbon tax election? That is the decision.